The basement of Fritz Learned's home is full of treasures. I don't hunt or I don't fish. This is my hunting and fishing. Some buried over time. I just took it upstairs, put it on the kitchen table, and I started, well, there was Roy, and then over, I looked over, and there was Al. Like the face of a forgotten man, his death, yeah. the reason Fritz is alive. Just one incident changes everything. Stories connect us across generations, across oceans. They're what brought this small group together in Sockville to watch dozens more a world away in Belgium. That's where the mystery of a missing soldier begins. I, it's a shame for me to speak English uh, with you. Yours is hard <laughs> than my French. If you can't tell from his background or his front yard, or his hobbies. I restore Jeeps from the Second World War. Okay. Sonny Vare is something of a World War II buff. As my grandmother says, I've become completely crazy. He was always fascinated with stories his grandmother told, that's Lucette on the left, of life under Nazi occupation. There would be a kilometer long line for bread, and then you'd get to the end of the line and they'd say, there's no more bread. And the day the Americans freed her town. People started saying the Americans are coming, the Americans are coming. And one of them took me in his arms and gave me a piece of chocolate, and also one to my friend. And afterwards, I learned that he had been killed. A sweet moment followed so closely by sadness. Moved by the story, Sonny decided to find the soldier to search for the needle in this decades-old Belgian haystack. I consulted the archives of the city, but unfortunately, I didn't find anything there. So then I consulted the records of the grave diggers. He deciphered handwritten ledgers from the 1940s, tracked down declassified files from the U.S. Army, and finally found his man, Corporal Albert Plessick of Sockville, Wisconsin. I became impassioned by this, and it became a real duty to me, because in our town, nobody knew who he was. Nobody had noted his name. On his 29th birthday, 1944, Corporal Plessick shared that treat with Lucette. He died in an accident the next day while cleaning the gun on his tank. And so I could bring my grandmother to the grave of the one who, 77 years before, had given her this famous piece of chocolate. Corporal Plessick did not have any children. Neither did his brother or sister, a family tree with no living branches. His widow, though, well, that's where the plot thickens. You get the feeling like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I'm going to solve this. Ann Kircher, president of the Sockville Historical Society, loves a good mystery. And the more you dig, the more fun it gets. That's oh, my him. gosh. That's him. That's him. When Sonny reached out on Facebook, as Sherlock would say, the game was afoot. I'm looking for someone with Plessick. And then I said to my husband, I said, that name sounds so familiar. He says, yeah, that was Roy and Vera's tavern. Of course, in Wisconsin, the clue would be a bar. Is that tavern still open? Yes, it is. yes, yes, it's right on the corner. Just before they get to the railroad tracks. The name and owners changed over the years, but back in the day, Roy and Vera's was the spot in Sockville. It was the place to be. It was very popular. Remember Fritz? He would know about the tavern. He practically grew up there. Our friendship with Vera and Roy, they were like second parents to us, and a lot of people couldn't under quite understand the connection. Here it is. Vera and Roy were there the day Fritz's parents got married. Fritz's mom, Joyce, actually lived above the bar during the war. Why? Well, Vera was Al's sister, and Joyce, Al's widow. Not that Fritz knew any of that as a child. As kids, my mother never even spoke of it. Joyce remarried after the war and raised three boys in Sockville. She was kind of sparing my dad that, you know. But quietly, Al was always there. She was a saver. You know, that generation, things were meager and, uh, you know, they, they saved everything. And... A dog tag in a box. A hat in a drawer. Letters in flowing cursive to dearest Joyce. She lost her first husband, and then she sends off her first son to to, to a war again, and it had it had to affect her. It had to have been hard on her. All of those memories and emotions tucked away. It actually had his name and serial number in the in the hat. Buried in Sockville until a man in Belgium started digging. There's a reverence in Europe to this day for those who liberated the continent. 
It's why there's now a plaque in Belgium memorializing Corporal Albert Plessig of Sockville. The lucky ones made the sacrifice of their youth, the less lucky ones of their lives. Dedicated almost 80 years after his death, thanks to a man he never knew. It's not only for Al Plessig, but for all the veterans that are, all the fellas that lost their lives over there. A ceremony to honor the sacrifice. Men like Al Plessig served and died so others could live. With photojournalist Sean Chen, Carl Deffenbaugh, Fox 6 News.